Hello, this is a tutorial on making a slew limiter in Faust. This is something that was fun to work out and I thought it had nice general uh, principles that could be illustrative. So basically a slew limiter is something that takes um, an input signal, let's say it looks like this, x versus time, and subjects it to slew limitation. So, so the output y will um, will track x until it goes too fast too far. So this is the, the slew limitation. It's a maximum slope and it catches up and follows it and then it gets slew limited in the other direction. And this happens in op amps. Um, it's just a fundamental um, you know, uh, limitation on how fast the output can change. So how do you simulate that in Faust? Um, it's a fun little problem. So let's have our input signal X coming in. Um, we're gonna have to uh, compare it to the output. Let's say the output's over here and we just um, bring it around and compare it. So it's plus and minus. And that gives us you know, how much slew we want. So let's call this um, X minus Y just to give it a name that will be helpful when we write the code. And then we go into a um, a box, let's call it stepped calculation, that will either pass through x minus y or it will pass through the maximum slope. And so that will be an input, let's call it m. And so that comes in. And um, and then we have our delta. Um, let me do a little bit of erasing here to make a little room for uh, a summer because we have to now um, take our delta which is either you know the uh, maximum slope or the desired slope, and we have to um, um, see that'll just be a sum. Um, so this is y, and uh, and then we add this delta to y, and I can draw this in a number of ways. I'm going to draw it as much as I can, like Faust would draw it. So that's why my uh, feedback path goes up and over, because Faust draws it that way, and I'll also draw the little. Uh, squares that indicate one sample of delay. So this is really x minus y prime, x minus y delayed one sample. And so this is what makes it a little bit tricky because it's got two feedback. You can think of it as uh, concentric feedback loops, um, but it's a, it's a single feedback that, that has two destinations. And so it's a little bit hard to write down in your head. Um, well, a lot of us couldn't do it the first time. And so now that we have a block diagram, it's much easier to write down the Faust. Okay, so um, let's let the uh, slew limiter function S of L. So we have a parameter M. Parameters usually come first, right? And then the uh, input signal is um, X. And sometimes we need to explicitly name it, and sometimes we don't. Um, let's see if we do or don't. <clears throat> um, so we're first going to run into a summer. And so that we can write as plus. And then the output of the summer uh, goes to the, um, the step calculator, which is going to need the uh, input. And since x minus y is a signal, we'll put the uh, maximum slope argument first. And let's imagine that we don't need to uh, you know, name the signal uh, in this context. Well, we know we're, we're, um, it's getting the output of the summer, so it's not going to be named. Um, so that is now going to another summer, and this summer has um, just a, a feed around. This is your standard little integrator. Um, you, you know, you can just sort of recognize this as an integrator. It's very common. But then we have another feedback path, and it's negative feedback. You know, we have this minus sign here. So, so the way I say this is feedback through times of minus one. So asterisk is, is a, a function name, and its argument is minus 1. And so um, that's the function asterisk, or times. And we're feeding back through that function. And so where will that go? Well, um, the input to this plus is already taken, so hopefully it'll, it'll go all the way back to this plus uh, at the beginning. Um, and to make sure of that, we, um, we put parentheses around it. And, and that's very often necessary because, you know, you might have other open inputs somewhere that might grab it. It'll, it'll grab the first open input going back. So that's, that's the, uh, the Faust, and, um, and we're done, except that we need to uh, 
define the step calculator. So step calc of m, um, um, and let's just keep it clear by writing x minus y explicitly in the signal. So x minus y is going to split into two cases. In the there's basically the case of upgoing and downgoing. So let's do upgoing first. That's easier, right? Um, so we fan it out into two signal paths. Um, and the first one will be the maximum going up. So when you're going up, you're looking for the minimum of m, the maximum slope, and x minus y, the upgoing slope. So let's just write that. And see, this is when we're happy to have our names. So uh, this can be in any order. Um, well, wait a minute. We don't need the name. So we have a copy of x minus y. Um, I could have just written min of m comma x minus y, and I didn't have to actually uh, do it the way I did it. Um, doesn't matter. So we can, um, we can do that. We're done. And then we can also uh, now do the down going direction, which will just be a max with minus m, right? Um, it's just going the other direction. Instead of min with the maximum positive slope, it's a max with the uh, maximum negative slope. And now we have two signals uh, that we have to select based on the sign of x minus y. And that's where we really needed the um, name. All right, so now we have two signals coming in to the next stage, which will then be a select two. And it will select on the sign of x minus y. So we can choose either sense we, and, and just figure it out. So I'll just say, we'll see if it's negative. If no, then we're doing, we're going up. And um, if yes, then we're going down. And so that, and that's the direction that we had it. So yeah, so if I had written min, if I had written max then min, then this would be uh, greater than zero and greater than or equal is equivalent because zero just does the same in both cases. So let's see, that looks about right, and that should be the end of it. And uh, I guess the only thing I might do differently is I might put this in a width block um, so that it's all one big function, um, define step calc locally. But otherwise, that should be fine. So that's the, the way you think through. Um, try to make a block diagram, and then it's very straightforward to encode the block diagram in Faust. And draw the block diagram as closely as the Faust compiler likes to draw things as possible um, that'll just facilitate the uh, translation into the Faust code.